VR buffs prime time. No Jake, so we can't start with Buff Nation. Let's go. That's got to hold that for him. But we do have a special guest today. Someone who I just realized as we were getting ready for the show, I've known for over 10 years now. Yep. Yet we've never done a show together. So uh, super excited to welcome on uh, CU Football Director of Creative Services. Yep. John Snelson. What is up, dude? What up? Thanks for having me. I yep. brought my uh, Coach Prime glasses with me. Just, yes. I'm not going to wear them the whole time. But, yeah. <laughs> you, you're, you're in the, uh, the Coach Prime festive spirit. That's right. Um, dude, it's, it's so awesome to have you on and, and CU fans that have been with us for a long time remember your work and have known your work for a long time. Um, but w what's cool about this show is we have so many new Buffs fans that have come along with Coach Prime, whether it's from Jackson, whether they're longtime Cowboys fans that have just followed Coach Prime wherever we, where we go. So I'm super excited to have you on just to kind of have you explain your journey uh, as a Buff and a Buffs fan and obviously a content creator for the Buffs. Uh, and so we'll talk a little football. We'll talk a little bit of everything here. But I want to start with just your story. Um, start as early as you want Kay. and uh, take us from then to now. So for most of my adult life, I've been working for CU football, uh -huh. um, which is not something I planned or like aspired to do out of high school or anything like that. Um, I didn't grow up a Buffs fan. I grew up a Texas Longhorns fan, actually. Mm. My first game ever at Folsom Field was watching Vince Young and Cedric Benson against the Buffs, uh, 2004, I believe. I want to say it was like 35-0 or something. I can't remember the score. It was it not was like, pretty. I was us. there to see Vince Young. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you so know, you grew up in Colorado. I grew up in Colorado, but um, a Texas fan. My dad went to Texas, so okay. I was raised a Horns fan. But you know, senior year, deciding I'm going to go to CU, all in with CU football. So in college, uh, you know, I didn't know really what I wanted to do. I did engineering my freshman year. Wasn't wow. Into that. Uh, <laughs> You know, you were one of the people that they try to weed out in the early class. I was weeded out. I did not <laughs> want to do that. And uh, then I ended up switching to economics, but I was always like super into CU football, um, all sports, but CU football mostly. And I kind of had this like inkling to like want to get involved in the program. And so one day I went and I just walked up to the front desk in Dow Ward and said, hey, I'm a student here. I'd love to volunteer. I'd love to help. I just want to be involved however I can. And so I got uh, hired as like an intern in recruiting. So this was under Hawkins staff. Okay. Um, there was a guy named Zach Dixon that kind of headed up uh, recruiting and doing all the communications and all that. And so I started working for the Buffs in probably 2008, um, learning how to do Photoshop, make mail outs. <laughs> And uh, I had no... So that's... A mail out is essentially like the Photoshop of the kid in the Buffs jersey saying like, this could be you type of thing. Yeah. And it wasn't like... It wasn't nothing like we do now. I'm now sure. it's like super personalized, like everything. But it, back then it was like, uh, here's some great things about Boulder. And we put it in the mail and we ship it to him. Uh, here's our head coach. Here's whatever. Right. Everything about the program. Um, and then... At one point, I had made a highlight video just for fun at home, and I posted it on YouTube. And it was Who like, was it? Um, so basically, I took like this versus commercial that was like a really cool voiceover, uh -huh. and I put buffs clips over it, and I posted this on YouTube, and it like got you know decent amount of views. And I was just kind of figuring out how to use like iMovie on my own. Yeah. And I got a message from Jamie Guy. Uh huh. And he basically was like, hey, would you want to come work for the team? Are you a student? All that. And I was like, well, I actually work upstairs already doing, you know, recruiting stuff. And so I kind of started doing dual roles. I started doing video stuff uh, between filming practice for like coaching film and doing recruiting stuff like helping, you know, official visits and uh, continuing to do graphics and mail outs and all that. So that was kind of like my start in the in the Buffs world. Um, I learned how to do video editing, just going there every day after class. Um, and so was you, that video you made, the edit you made that you put on YouTube, was that like one of the first things you had ever edited up? 
Uh, probably the first video I'd wow. ever made. Yeah, and that got you yeah. a gig, which is crazy. I mean, it's like Bad led to <laughs> all this. Yeah, um, I always tell people like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like studying film or media or anything like that. Yeah, it was just I just wanted to make this thing, and I just Googled until I learned how to do it, um, and I liked it, so it stuck with me. Um, so I continued to do it, and then, you know, I guess officially. I started making recruiting videos like all time, you know, best quarterbacks at CU, all time running backs at CU. Uh, so it was like, you know, the Hawkins era was my, that was my time mm -hmm. when I kind of, you know, those little guys right there. Yeah, there we go. We got them on the, on the table. <laughs> Cody Hawkins, Demetrius Sumler, Patrick Pat Williams, Williams, Scotty McKnight, Tyson DeVray. I still talk to some of those guys too, which really? is cool. Yeah, I talked to Cody like a month ago. That's awesome. How's he doing? Good. He's a head coach now. That is great. I He's know. head coach of where? Idaho State. I Damn. Believe. Yeah. So I knew he was what he was OC under his dad at UC Davis. UC Davis. Yeah. And then he got promoted. He's one of those guys too that just like their whole career you always say like oh this guy's gonna be a coach one day. Yeah, no doubt. And he was I think he was what wide receivers at Ohio State for a minute there. I don't know actually. I think he was at Ohio State for yeah. a second. Huh. Um, but that's awesome. Awesome for him. Yeah. Really quick, I have to remind everyone that we're presented by Illegal Pete's before I get yelled at. You an Illegal Pete's guy? Yeah, I love Illegal Pete's. What's Pete's. your order? Uh, sometimes I do the fish burrito. Yep. I like the fish burrito. Um, That's good because like, you can't get that at the other burrito spots. Right, yeah. There you it's go. It's like different from Chipotle. We go up there for lunch on the hill quite a bit. It's a banger. When it's warm out. Yeah. We got, actually got some uh, some Illegal Pete's coupons I'll hook you up with on oh, the way sweet. out. Yeah. Nice. Anyways, back uh, to the story. Yeah, so... All that said, I worked as a student for the Buffs for a while, um, my junior and senior year. And after school, they had kind of offered me like a GA position in recruiting, mm -hmm. and I didn't, I didn't really want to do that. Um, but I went and worked at Huddle, which is funny because back then it was like the beginning of Huddle. There right. was like 30 employees there. So right when I graduated, I moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. Wow. And I was basically... Uh, Behind enemy lines. Yeah. <laughs> I was basically coach support, which is basically tech support for yeah. coaches uploading their film and stuff. And it was, you know, it was a cool company, young company. Uh, now they're freaking huge. They're, yeah. They're all over the world. Um, but anyways, six months into that job, I got a call from CU. Said, hey, you know, our guy just left. Would you want to come back? Yes. So I came back in 2011. Um which so, 2011, I believe, was my first year. Well, I was a sophomore, and it was also my first year covering the team. Yeah. So I came back with, like, three games left in 11. Uh, it was Coach Embry then. And, uh, you know, I got to kind of learn. I, I was half coaching video, so I filmed, like, all 22 on the sidelines. Um, I wasn't even filming, like, highlights back then. But I'd still, like, edit the motivational videos of the week and – Things like that. Little. Was that your first experience behind the camera? Um, yeah, because I when I was a student, I never really shot. It was y'all right. just editing videos. Um, yeah, so I guess I really learned how to like shoot in eleven and twelve under Coach Embry, and that was kind of the beginning of like making videos and putting them out on YouTube. Um, which is like you know things have changed so much since that time, but. It was kind of early adoption of what the creatives are now. You right. Know? I mean, that's back when the YouTube logo was the the like old school TV. You yep. know? So, yeah, uh, I ended up working for Coach Embry staff. And then under Coach McIntyre, I kind of shifted my role from assistant video coordinator to basically, uh, I think my title was football video production manager. Mm hmm. So that was like really when like <clears throat> people started getting hired full time as like content creators for the team for the team. So that was 2013. Is um, that is that when you kind of became like second in line to Jamie? Um yeah, I, well, I always was then. Okay. But uh that transition, I guess it was after McIntyre's first year was kind of when it was like it was acceptable to have like a full-time position that was like creative for a team yeah so there were some other schools that had it uh clemson and some other schools had a similar role 
but it wasn't super common back then. So uh, it was usually crazy because now it's like if you don't have like 10 people working in that department, you're small. Yeah. And it it was like the video coordinator made weekly videos for the team. And that was like what it was. And you put them out sometimes. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I got to this point uh, as far as working with the buffs. Um, And I've done, you know, a few other things. I left CU for about four years after the 2016 season. And kind of went into the sports TV so, world. 2016, would you say that was like the biggest season for you? No doubt. Uh, because you guys did like the behind the scenes, the rise kind of documentary. And that like, as far as CU content goes, I can't remember a time other than now when like people were like waiting by their, you know, their computer for the next episode of the rise to drop. It was like, it felt like hard knocks to me where you're just like, when's the next one coming? Like people are like tweeting at you every week. Like when we got, when's it coming? Like that was awesome. I mean, I, you know, looking back now, I would say like, uh, I wish this would have been so much better, but really it's probably my most proud moment of my career. Um, because I think in the 2015 season, our team was kind of like, it felt like we had a bunch of dudes yeah. and we were going to be good, even Cheeto though we only and, won like yeah. five, I guess we won five games or four games. I think it was four. 15, but you could just feel it. Um, and, you know, that was when I felt like I started getting good enough to like make like a show yeah. on my own. Um, and so that summer I set up a call with Pac-12 Network and I was basically like, hey, I'm going to make this show uh whether you guys want to be a part of this or not, but it'd be awesome if you could air it yeah. on Pac-12 Network, um, and I'll do whatever I need to do to make sure I follow all your you know, network rules and stuff. And they were basically like, well, you know, you'd be the only team doing this. Like, we wouldn't have a show for every other team. And I was like, exactly. This yeah. is, that's what I'm going for. Uh, but so they, they ended up saying yes, and they didn't know me. So they aired, I think, the first episode on just Pac-12 Mountain. And uh, they saw the first episode, and they were like, this is awesome. We're going to put it on the on the national network. Um, and then, of course, we had one of the best seasons we've had in a long time. Won 10 games, and, um, you know, the rise was real. It was awesome. That was a f- very fun season. Yeah, dude, that was... It's kind of like catching lightning in a bottle, right? Because you had this really cool idea, and you like want to document everything, yeah. and then it just like everything came together to make that season so special. And like, it's funny because I remember some of the earlier stuff you did is when it really started. Like, wasn't there a time where like most of the videos were coming out on Vimeo rather than YouTube? Yeah, yeah. And like that was like the Lawrence Vickers in the stadium one because that was before the rise season, right? Yep. No, that was 14. So that was two seasons before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I remember a couple of those. And then this, this one, like the rise season was just so sick. And you're right. Like going into that, you knew we had dogs. Philip Lindsay, Cheeto Bayouzier, Tedrick Thompson, you know, obviously Cepho. And it was interesting with Cepho because he, like, kind of became, he went from being someone who people weren't hyped about to like a, a legend yeah. almost overnight. I would say even myself, I was like a little skeptical of Cepho. Remember I just, the Davis Webb yeah, saga? Was, Everyone was hoping Davis Webb was going to come transfer here, and then he pulled out at the last second. Yep. Uh, Cepho was a dog, though. He proved me wrong, for sure. He proved everyone wrong. And I remember I wrote an article about him at the end of that season where he told me like he literally couldn't get it out of his head that, that Utah game the year before. Remember, it was a close game. He threw a pick six. I do, yeah. And he told me in that interview that he went – he was at a party like later that weekend. Some girl just came up to him and said, it was all your fault. We lost. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm never letting that happen again. And, yeah. and he never did. Yeah. Uh, so that was awesome. All right. Then you left. But we're going to get to that in a second. First, again, a shout out to our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Uh, get down to Illegal Pete's. Tyler Brown endorsed their queso yesterday. John Snelson has endorsed the fish burrito. Uh, I go with the reverse nachos. It's all great you can get tacos there they have all sort they have a whole new lineup of margaritas i haven't tried them all yet but the ones i've had are delicious there's one down the street from the dnvr bar 
There's one right up the street from CU's campus. Uh, so check out our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Whatever you are looking for, they've got it. Uh, and also a shout out to one of our new partners, Fubo TV. And this one's simple because if you want to watch the Nuggets and Avs, your your options are very limited. Uh, but Fubo, Fubo TV is one of your great options there. I actually have been using it all season before we even started doing a deal with them. Uh, and I've become a huge fan of the product. Um, it's, it, you know, it's crazy to say it, but for a long time, you couldn't just turn on your TV and click on the Nuggets game. There were, you had to jump through all sorts of hoops and whatnot to, uh, to watch it. Or like you are tonight, you'd have to go to the game. Uh, but now you can get Fubo TV and watch the Nuggets and Avs uh, through a streaming service, which is fantastic. So get yourself in on some Fubo TV. Go to Fubo dot, sorry, Fubo TV dot com slash dnvr to get in on our awesome deals over there all right so after that electric season is it fair to say you leveled up yeah i i mean at this point working at cu football gives you kind of a platform where a lot of people see your work uh and i was getting people hitting me up all the time to do all kinds of video content from like ad agencies to um people wanting to do documentaries or just stuff for their foundations or commercials or whatever. But, um, there was a couple guys I had, you know, made relationships with that had production companies. Uh, and I kind of wanted to go explore that world. Um, so I kind of started freelance for a little while and, uh, ultimately I ended up working for a guy named Micah Brown who, you know, when I was saying I was one of the first to do these show content types of things, he was really before my time. And so I had known him for a while. He played football at KU and was a film major. And so after he graduated, he worked for the team and made a, a show that was on a network too, very similar to like the rise. Awesome. Um, and so he had started kind of leveling up uh, his career and he had done um, – all kinds of stuff for ESPN and college game day and NFL network and everything. And so I ended up working for him, um, which was very cool. I got to do a lot of very cool stuff. Um, we did NFL network shows. I got to do a 30 for 30, uh, called Chuck and Tito about yeah. UFC, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz. Um, how cool was that? Very cool. Yeah. That was, that was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Um, I got to be a producer on that which sort of meant I did a little bit of everything, shooting, editing. Uh, I traveled and lived in Huntington Beach for a couple months shooting it. Um, it was a part of archiving, literally like every process of it. So it was awesome to be a part of that. Um, but I think deep down there was always like, <clears throat> I didn't get into filmmaking because I just love filmmaking in general. I, I love a lot of it. A lot of aspects of it but i think the part of it that like i always loved was doing it for the buffs yep and so that's just what excites me um i love doing that i love doing hard work for the buffs because i love being a part of the team um and i had gotten a call in 2021 about a new position they were creating which was essentially head of content for football um and so I, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to do that, but I ended up looking into it and, you know, just kind of felt like that was like, I know I'm going to love work every single day if I do this. Um, and so I ended up taking that job uh, back at CU right before camp 2021. Um, so the journey, you know, kind of all led me back to CU. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that, though, about wanting to come back because... I love that you've gotten to experience because people always ask me like, oh man, like if ESPN came calling and wanted you to do a national show, like, is that the dream? And I'm like, I don't think so. Like yeah. for me, my passion for this all stems from my passion for Colorado sports. As I always say, CU football is my first love, but I, I truly love them all. Like going on some like national talk show to talk about like the Lakers, doesn't move me at all and like it's cool for you it's obviously slightly different but you kind of got to experience that like you yeah. got to make a 30 for 30 for espn and I, I know you said that was an amazing experience but 
there was still like that string pulling you back. Yeah, there's like a difference. I mean, you know, when you're doing that kind of stuff, it's it's businessy, it's money driven, it's you know. And I loved it. I loved working with Micah, especially. Um, I just, you know, it's just that feeling of like, dude, I just love being a part of CU. I, I don't. That's like what drives me. Yeah. You know, and so, um, it was it was hard to leave that, but I felt like it'd be better for me. You know, and I'm. I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's great. Hell yeah. And like, I don't know, we have this like community of people that have been yeah. around CU and it, 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 there is something special about, you know, even whether you're in inside the university or creating content around the university or just a fan, like, you know, I think back to again, 2016, but like when we all went to the Alamo Bowl and there was just like this crew of yeah. people that like everyone kind of knows each other and we're all partying whatever that bar was called like the mad dog tavern or something yeah and it's just like that i don't know or like being in lincoln you know and the bus pulled off the upset or i guess it wasn't that big of an upset but when they came back and won that one like there's just something cool about like the the community that surrounds you and no i love the fact that it's growing right now yeah i mean it is exponentially growing right now and so um, let's let's get into that transition from last year to this year well um you know, obviously it was a tough year. I loved working for Coach Durrell, but, you know, things needed to change. Yep. Uh, major things. We were preparing for different names that we had a hunch could be a thing. Uh, we didn't really know, but, you know, Deion Sanders kept coming up. I think in the back of everyone's heads, it's like, yeah, right. Dude, you know, even working there. I, mean, I I'm said like, it on this show. I was like, people keep saying... Deion Sanders to me and yeah. I just keep saying like I hope you're right but I, <laughs> I have a hard time believing it yeah and it you know it turns from like an internet thing to like it keeps getting listed on hot boards and things like that and inside the program I mean we had meetings about how we're going to announce new coach and all that and we always included him because I you know it was always like a possibility um and we had names that we I'm sure names that everybody else had seen on the internet too that mm -hmm. were educated guesses of what we should be preparing for um do you like i mean obviously you guys are closer to it than even we are or you know fans are but like are you like texting rick george like hey bro like who should i prepare for here sort of yeah okay um but they're you know they keep it close right right you know? it's not like rick is texting me back you know? right <laughs> um He's like, but, here's the top three. Yeah, there, there was always times where I was, like, trying to pry for information to get... I I, th I feel like I had a good idea on some right. things at times, but we didn't really know um, until probably a week away. I had a few conversations where I was like, okay, this is, like, probably actually happening. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Deion Sanders is our coach now. Coach Prime, freaking crazy. Uh but it's been a crazy ride and it's been fun and challenging and amazing. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't I mean, know how to describe it. It's been awesome. Take me through kind of what it was like once he got there. Also, thank you for including my tweet in the, uh, yeah, I got the, you. Yeah. I, I like teared up when I saw that legitimately, yeah. which is funny. Cause like, I know you guys and it's, it, I don't know, but it was just like, man, this is sick that I got in, uh, included in this. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, they dropped a video when Coach Prime was hired that was essentially just like showing kind of like all the hype around it and whatnot and it leading to him coming and they included my tweet. So that's thanks. right. <laughs> I got you. Um, but for like from that day when he got there, I feel like at least from my perspective, it felt like a lot of things were up in the air. Like was there a, a little bit of like a feeling around the program of like, well, this is a little different than a normal coach. Like, it, it really anything is on the table. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what to expect. We, the first time I saw him was that night he landed, and uh, me and a couple of other of our creative team went out to the airport and got all the pictures and stuff. Get him getting off the plane, but it was like midnight or whatever. Yeah. And we went to the Champion Center, and he walked around and kind of had all these people around him that we, we weren't sure who was who. Um, you know, so at the time, it's like, I, this is awesome experience to be a part of, but, like, I don't know 
what tomorrow's going to be like. Right. I don't know what the future is going to be like. Well, and he had and just, like, coached a game. I remember watching that content, and you could tell he was yeah. exhausted. Yes. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, I don't know. We had planned, like, oh, when he gets here, we're going to do, like, this photo shoot, and we're going to do this interview, we're gonna do all it. but it's, like, it just kind of happened, and yep. we just moved forward. Um, but, yeah, so we were up till like, I don't know, like 3.30 a.m., something like that, and kind of just, like, so here we go. Um, and then the next morning came right back early, got to meet with him for the first time, um, which was kind of like a, I don't know, it felt, it felt cool, but weird at the same time that yeah. like, do you I'm feel like, like you're like interviewing kind of? Sort of. Yeah. yeah. He didn't know anything about me. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I've been around CU a long time and done all this stuff, but to him, I was just a, a new face that he, you know, he didn't know. Right. Um, so there was like a little bit of a transitional period and then you're trying to figure out like who's going to be on the staff. Uh, and I wouldn't say I feared for my job, but you, everyone's kind of like, I have no idea. Right. I mean, that, yeah. That's kind of what I was getting at is like, you just have no, like, you know, he could have said it. I have an entire team of people that I'm coming in and that's it. Yeah. Um, but thankfully not. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say just, it feels like it's been forever now, but it's only been you know a few months, four mm -hmm. months or whatever. But, uh, you know, I feel like I've built to the point where he's in touch with what we're doing and he talks to me every day and I'm free to walk up and talk to him and ask him his opinion on content and uh, what he wants to be involved in or how I can help, you know, promote, promote whatever yeah. we're doing. So there's a lot going on. Obviously, there's content coming out like crazy with Bucky and Darius and Neely. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a different different world um he's the king of promoting everything he knows how to market literally every aspect of the program and so a lot of it's just like i'm doing my thing but learning at the same time and um i don't know we're yeah. just you're just doing it you know it, it's cool and, and it has to be such a blessing for you that he is so aware of that side of it like marketing i would say Damn near 50% of college football is marketing. Yeah. No and doubt. the fact that he's the king of it, which is your job, you know, to at least help that happen, uh, has to be nice for you to like work alongside side someone who's like, oh, I get this. I know why this is important. Rather than a lot of coaches are just like, oh, I've come here to coach football. Yeah. You know, one of the big transitions that's been like kind of a mental shift for what I do is he wants everything filmed which is kind of the dream for when yes. you're like my position because all these past coaches, I've always wanted to film, you know, the good and the bad ultimately to show the good. But mm -hmm. you know, when you watch a TV show, you want to see some drama, you want to yeah. see ups and downs, you want to see uh, people struggling so you can show eventually their successes. Um, but most coaches don't want that. They don't want to put anything out that's insider that's, right maybe anything that makes the program look, you know, negative in an aspect. Or and, like, everything kind of has to be perfectly shined up and curated. and Yeah. And so he's like, I want it all, you know? There's a guy throwing up on the sidelines. I want that out, you know? Yeah. He's just It's just an interesting shift um, that, you know, obviously I still have to, you know, kind of manage the brand in the right yeah. way. You know, we aren't uh, Bucky's you know, vlogs. We're mm -hmm. not just show literally everything. It's kind of like tailored towards, you know, our, our mission, I'd say, but, uh, it is, it's refreshing to be a part of, you know, someone who wants to really like showcase everything in a real way. Yeah, for sure. And again, that just goes down to him getting it. And I think a lot of that maybe comes from him working in television yeah. for so long and like understanding content. And that's, what's so crazy about all of this. And I think that maybe some people that haven't been as close to it as you or even me don't understand is how much he gets like everything. It's not just that he gets football. It's not just that he gets branding. It's not just that he gets players. It's the content. It's the marketing. It's just top to bottom. I, I personally don't think I've been around a coach at any level that gets it on the level that he does. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it's been a shift for him too, because we have a huge team of people here that 
I don't. He didn't really have anyone at Jackson. Right. Which, you know, I heard uh, Bucky was telling me the other day. He was like, "Man, at Jackson, I did like everything. I was Snelson. I was this guy. I was this guy. You know. Like, yeah. That's just how it was. Social there. media. Um. But you know, our team, like just in football, we have uh, Porsche, who's our social media manager mm-hmm. and does all our channels. Uh, Derek Markle does all our graphics and design and photography. And then Paul Morissette uh, does video with me. And then we have a team of like 10 students that do video and graphics and photography. And all of us are working full time, basically making content for CU football. Uh, So it's like, you know, it's, it's an interesting shift for him too, I'd say, because he has so much support and so many different avenues of getting content out. Um, and, and not only that, I mean, we have our creative team, you know, I was mentioning before, it was like a new thing when I was first doing this. Now there's so many like talented creatives that work in all sports at CU. Um, it's just a, I don't know, it's changed a lot since I was last year. And it's gotta be pretty cool for you that now, like similar, honestly, to the 2016 season when I think there were national eyes on CU, like now all the stuff that you guys are creating is going out to such a wider audience than probably ever before. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude, like our our videos get like a million views now, which is insane. <laughs> yes. Like I feel like my best videos before got like 50,000, you know, something like that. That's and what I've been like, trying to tell people about this show, honestly, is like we were doing we were doing hundreds and then we went to tens of thousands like you yeah. know it, it, obviously bigger numbers for you but similar percentage increases yeah and uh, it's been wild um but i'm like you know i'm super grateful for the experience that it's like this is like the peak of college football media right now and i'm like part of you know it's just it still feels weird to be like a part of it you know? right you're like at the center of it um I want to talk about a couple other things, but first a shout out to our presenting sponsors, Illegal Pete, as well as Bacchus and Shanker. Bacchus and Shanker win for Colorado families. If you are hurt in any way and it was not your fault that you got hurt, hit up our friends over at Bacchus and Shanker. Uh, and the best part about Bacchus and Shanker is you pay zero dollars until they win your case, and they will win your case, but you don't have to pay anything until they get you that dub. Uh, so hit up Bacchus and Shanker if you are injured uh, and you need someone to have your back. And also, DraftKings Sportsbook, um, we're almost back to uh, the last couple rounds here of March Madness. We've been betting on every underdog, and it has paid us a lot of money. Uh, So shout out to DraftKings Sportsbook for giving us that opportunity. You can go over to DraftKings Sportsbook, use the code DNVR when you sign up over there and get in on all of their fantastic deals, including... Bet five on any money line. Get $200 in free bets right now uh, that you can use on anything you want to get your account started and rolling. Uh, Of course, age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And that deal is void in Ohio. All right, hit that like button for us. Let's get this thing at least to 250 before we finish up here. We'll uh, we'll answer some of your guys' questions before we finish. But first, I have a couple more questions for you. So it's really interesting, I think, the dynamic, and I love it from a fan perspective, of what you guys have going on from the football team in terms of your team and the, account, and the content you guys are creating. But then there's this like really cool contrast with what Bucky and Darius and Neely are doing because they have this like awesome like stripped-down, behind-the-scenes, no-frills feel. And I think it's such a great contrast with the like well curated and perfectly edited and everything that you guys do. Is that been like kind of an interesting contrast and like a fun thing for you to work through? Yeah. So, you know, I would say at first it's like, uh, okay, like who are these guys? Like what's going on? Yeah. Like this is my job. Or, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, over time, you know, I've kind of grown to appreciate it and I love, you know, working alongside those guys like we don't do the same thing they know it's different i know it's different um you know bucky's always coming over and being like dude your stuff looks like a movie like it looks (laughs) like a movie trailer it does um you know mine's just like walking around with a phone i'm just capturing everything it's cool having both though you know like it's um 
I'm surprised how many people watch all those videos, to be honest. Everybody's watching it. I get texts from friends all the time that know more stuff about the program than I do because they <laughs> sit and watch all those videos. Oh, yeah, that's um, me. I, I, I joke that it's part of my homework now. Yeah. You got to turn on well off, turn on reach the people, turn on the pregame show and, and see what's going down because, you know, it's, I mean, collectively, it's like a Hard Knocks episode drops every night. It's just a, a lot more stripped down, which... I think, honestly, and not to, to uh, derail too much here, but I think the pandemic changed what people's view, changed people's standards for what can be content. And I think it was just like any, you can record anything and that's content. Yeah. And I, I personally love it. I think we're obviously, you and I are closer in terms of curation and that sort of thing. Um, but I love that anything can be content now. And I love that we get that behind the scenes access, but I also love, you know, the, like uh, the super well done, well edited, well shot stuff too. And, and I'm just, I think we're really lucky as CU fans that we can get it all. Yeah. And I get it. You know, it's like, I, I don't, I wouldn't say I had to like grow on me, but it's like, I do like see things now where I'm like, man, people love this because it doesn't matter how it's really shot or edited. It's real. Yeah. You know, you're really seeing what's happening. Um, where a lot of times like the super produced stuff feels like an advertisement or a, um, it, like it could be fake because it's so edited. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and so I, you know, I, I think it's great that there's kind of both. Um, I mean, all those guys, they work really hard to do. They're there every single day filming everything. And, you know, like I was saying, like Coach Prime, he wants everything out, yep. which is extremely unique. It's got to be the only program in the nation that wants that. Well, like everyone else is so secretive. And we know? talked about this. Like players now have a chance to almost like test drive if they want to come to Colorado. Like you turn on these videos and you know what you're getting in Coach Prime. Like yeah, you can't turn on a video and know what you're getting in Matt Rule. You right. just don't. Like you might think because of the way he talks to you on the phone, but we know a lot of these. Coaches are lying to these kids and yeah. like coach prime, you know who that man is when you watch these videos. Yep. And you know, not only that, there's a whole series coming out on Amazon and yep. there's dude, I mean, there's just unlimited media coming out, uh, which is incredible. So what do we have to look forward to from you this year? Well, you know, to be honest, I'm kind of following to see how it goes what coach prime kind of wants from us you know what i really enjoy doing is kind of the documentary style stuff i think a lot of that is kind of waiting to see how the team's going to shape up and who's mm -hmm. going to be on the team and you know um i really want to do a lot of features on players yeah you know short features where we can kind of talk about different aspects of their life i've already started filming some of those um you know, and a lot of it, I want to continue to do like insider type content with coach in addition to kind of the, the hype stuff. I think one of the cool things is like we're going to have the potential to do some incredible stuff. Like, for instance, I asked Coach Prime the other day about getting a voiceover uh, for a video project. And he's like, well, who do you want? And I'm like. I don't know, Ice Cube maybe? And he's <laughs> like, yeah, we can get him. You know, it's like, it's so <laughs> That's weird. That's so sick. That he's just like, yeah, he'll do it. You know, he's probably want to get paid, but he'll do it. And I'm like, all right, let me come up with some names and I'll, I'll get back to you. But We got to get Ice Cube back in the CU hat. Yeah, no, I want to give him one of those hats. That's I've been sick. saying that for a little while, but you know. You have one, don't you? Like a similar looking hat? Yeah. yeah. Coach Hagen got that for me. That's sick. He had like a guy make some of those hats, so. That's so awesome. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of it's like we've been learning and growing and putting out a lot of stuff and trying to just level up what we're doing. So I don't have like a series planned or something yeah. in particular, but I think a lot of what I want to do is, you know, focus on featuring certain players um, and being able to kind of follow them in a, in a documentary style way through the season so as a person with a documentary eye i'm sure you're always looking for characters that interest you so what characters interest you the most about this team there's a lot of new guys that are very interesting um tyler brown you guys had yesterday dude he is awesome i love putting out content with tyler brown i'm glad you um, brought him up because 
uh, I put this out on Twitter, but you know, I, I just I'm proud to have him representing the university. He he reminds me a lot of Evan Batty. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, just uh, he, just such a pure person. He's I mean wise beyond his years. The fact that he's 21 years old blows my mind. Just the way that he not only just I just his approach to life is like way above what mine was at 21. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. He's a uh, w- w- that was a great episode. I'm just I- I'm glad you gave me a chance to bring that up because I was thinking about that this morning. Like I want to yeah. I want to give a shout out to Tyler. Um. Shador, Travis yeah. Hunter. Uh, I filmed with Zico. He's interesting. Yeah, um, got the accent too. Yep. We, uh, you know, I actually had a connection with the NFL office in London mm-hmm. because I had done some NFL Network content okay. um, for the Pathway program with the NFL, and so I knew some of the guys that worked there, and called and asked them about Zico, um, and they sent me some footage of him over at the NFL Academy, so I'm gonna do a feature with with him. Um. I don't know. I mean, there's so many, so many guys. Mata. Oh yeah. You know, Mata's an interesting dude. Um, there's obviously you know guys from the team before that. I some of my favorite players. Um, you know, probably do some stuff on Nico Hankerson. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. That's, so, it's awesome, and I think people are interested in everyone. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, especially with like <clears throat> this uh, this community. Also. Shout out to to Neely, who's uh, hanging out in the comments today. Neely, what up? <laughs> the homie. Um, all right. Last one I have for you, I think, before we'll get to some questions from the commenters, uh, is how crazy have these recruiting weekends been compared to some of the other ones that you've been used to? Um, you know, I will say, with Coach Durrell's staff, we did some pretty high-level, like, photo shoots and stuff. Okay. You know, as far as any of the other aspects of the recruiting weekend i'm not 100 percent sure like how different it is right now okay the hype is different yeah I know yeah, that. yeah um but from at least from my view like it feels like a lot more stuff is like coming out maybe that's yeah. just because it's a higher caliber of player who more people are interested in and obviously there's a larger fan base waiting to consume it yeah and it, you know it feels like Coach Prime can get any player to come here. So there's, like, obviously that aspect of it. Well, and you know that since we've been kids, the whole, the, the like, old phrase was, if you can get him to Boulder, you got a chance. Right. And he can get anyone to Boulder. Yep. Um, you know, as far as, like, creative-wise, I do feel like we've leveled up. We I feel like we always did really cool stuff, but we have uh, – I don't know. I feel like our photo shoots have been pretty high level, as yeah. good as I've. I feel like I've seen around the country. Um, we've done some different stuff, like brought cars in and things like that. That a lot of the kids like. Um, you know, we brought that seems new. McLaren and yeah, that's yeah. definitely new. Uh, Lamborghini and stuff like that into the IPF and brought some out onto the field. Um, Do you ever say like, "Hey, I got to move this car real quick," and then just. <laughs> <Peel out. laughs> I did not drive. I wish I would have, but um, yeah, I mean, it's been cool. And I feel like the, all the guys have had a great time at our, our photo shoots and we do videos and photos for every guy, personalized graphics. It's a pretty, the recruiting stuff's like a big part of our job. Yeah. It's kind of a, I feel like it's a pretty high level operation going. So and it's got to feel cool, cool for you as a fan of the team as well. Yeah. As like, you actually have a chance to impact the product on the field. Yeah. That, I mean, that's like one of the things I've always felt working for CU too, is like, it, it feels like, you know, you're like a part of like the success of the program or potentially, like you said, could help land this kid or, you know, make his experience better at CU. So yeah, yeah I don't know. Recruiting has been awesome. I've had a blast with it. It's, it's been busy. We've worked a lot of weekends, uh, yeah. but it's, you know, it's fun and it's a big part of our job and and that's just like awesome. part of the thing right when you work in sports like a lot of sports happen on the weekend i always try to explain that to people and they're like well why are you so busy or why, yeah. why can't you ever hang out on the weekends i'm like because oh, the games happen on the weekends yeah yeah or it's the, just part know. of the deal yep uh all right i actually do have one more okay. just as a fan how how excited are you just for to see this team play very excited i you know i would say I don't know what to expect mm-hmm. when we start actually playing. I do feel like the 
talent level is increased a lot. Um, you know, I have a good relationship already with a lot of the assistant coaches, and I'm a huge fan of them. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of stuff around the program. The, the hire of the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, uh, Sean Lewis, is like my favorite coach. I love him. I We talk a lot, and he's – He's super appreciative of what we do, which is really cool to hear from someone who's, you know, former head coach and coordinator. And um, Charles Kelly's been awesome too. So I, I think those two hires, uh, along with Coach Prime being able to bring in talent and be kind of the leader, uh, coaching wise, I feel confident. Um, so I'm, I mean, I think we're gonna be good. Yep. I, you know, I'm excited. I am too. Uh, I. I'm, I have a Sean Lewis obsession in terms of with his offense because yeah. I'm like, you know, I like football nerd out and go watch the film on what he did at Kent State and it fires me up. I always say, like, if the only move the Buffs made this offseason to their coaching staff was adding Sean Lewis, I would be like hyped. Yeah. And yet all of the other stuff happened and like he's, you know, just another stat, you know, part of the stack. But he is, I think someone just ranked him like a top 10 coordinator in the country. Um, so uh, I'm hyped about that. Yeah. The potential is there for us to be awesome. So. Hell yeah. All right, let's get to some of the questions from the comments, Alyssa. All right, from DCB, uh, have Bucky, Darius, and Neely seen the rise? I don't think so. I need to show them, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually, because I've seen a couple people mention this, we'll, I'm going to get a couple of your favorite videos when we're, once we're done here, and we'll put them in the uh, uh, in the description okay. of the show. So, so people, again, a lot of the, our listeners are are new to the program. Um, so, I want them to see some of your favorite stuff. Yeah, um, those guys come. You know, they come. They're around every day and hang out in the office. I'm gonna have to show them next week. Please do. All right, what's next? <laughs> From Al, uh, ask John to compare his feeling with the 2016 team to this year's team. Um, how do you feel about the chances of the 2023 team? We just talked about that a little bit, but different. I, you know, in 2016, I feel like I had, I was like very in tune with yeah. the players and the coaches and just the overall like sense of, I felt like we were going to be good that year. It just felt that way. Well, and it was um, different. We had seen all of those guys grow up Yeah. where it's like, these guys are just like a bunch of awesome players just showed up in our backyard and we're yeah. like, Oh hell yeah, let's ball. So I can't compare it. Um, it, you know, it's all those guys too, like being a part of the whole like process of it made it different for me. Um, I still talk to Phil and Cheeto and some of those guys like to this day. I just talked to Phil the other day. He was on at campus. That's awesome. Um, I still text with Cheeto every once in a while. It's like, you know, that was like a, a growing through, growing through losing, but seeing the whole process of how much better they got through those years leading up to 16. So this year, like I said, I mean, I feel like we have tons of talent. I just don't know what to really expect. I haven't. Sure. All I've seen is four practices of spring ball. So I have a theory that Philip Lindsay is going to become the next Hagen when it comes to this program. Like, <laughs> just he's going to somehow get his foot in the door. He's going to become part of the program and just stay there forever. I could see that. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? Did Coach Prime give you a nickname? He calls me Snelly. Snelly. My last name's Snelson. You know, Snelly's a common name. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's weird. Like, you know, it's been months now. Feels like it's been a while. But like, to have Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, walking down the hall being like Snelly is still <laughs> like a weird thing. Dude, it's cool. Uh, I've <laughs> only had this two times in my life. One was four years from 2012 to 2016 or whatever it was. When I woke up every morning and I thought, oh, my God, Peyton Manning is the quarterback of the Broncos. Yeah. The only ever time I've got that feeling is right now. When I wake up every morning and I say, oh, my God, Dion Coach Prime Sanders is the coach of the Buffs. It, yeah. Dude, I mean, we still have that. I still have that at work. It's it's crazy. It's pretty cool. All right. A couple more here from Charles Kelly, not the coach, <laughs> the famed commenter. Uh, do you have anything special planned as far as content this year? We talked a little bit about that already. Yeah. Um, other than covering a lot of 
Coach Prime's, you know, journey throughout the year, covering players and telling some of their backstories and things like that. Well, also some like exciting things I want to do. I think people might not know. You guys use like the nicest equipment that can money can buy. Yeah, and you shoot these games too, so we're, like people will get like sick highlights from the games from you guys. No doubt. Yeah, it's you know. How did that happen when you guys ended up with all of that like? just the best gear well recently i had a relationship with uh our sales rep at sony for a long time and they had a program that was basically like they want students to be using their gear and so when students are used to their gear they end up buying it when yeah. they go out into the real world Smart. right so sony gave us a ton of gear shout out sony um that all of our students get to use for free, which is amazing. That is incredible. And then we've bought tons of Sony gear. Um, uh, we had two red cameras back in the day yep. that we, I mean, we budgeted for and invested in, and That's felt awesome. like that would, uh, you know, be the best thing to help us like have the best content. Yep, and we did. <laughs> all right, uh, from C, John, what surprised you most about working with Coach Prime? You know, I shouldn't have been surprised because I had followed Jackson a little bit. But like I said, the fact that they want everything out is very surprising because there, there's no other team, no other coach in the nation that's like that. You know, I, I feel like football coaches by nature are very secretive. So they much. don't want their opponents to know anything about what they're doing. Uh, and Coach Prime has nothing to hide. He wants everything out. I mean, he just... He's there to put it out, and he knows that that stuff being out there is marketing our team and making us look good, not bad, you know? So that's what all, I feel like all the coaches are fearful of something getting out that's making them look bad. You know, Coach Prime's not afraid of that. And I've said this on our show before, but I think that Gen Z, maybe more than anyone else ever, values authenticity. Yeah. Uh, and they Indeed. also see through bullshit really easily. And I think that this generation uh, of kids is is like probably appreciating this. I mean, I've already heard of kids who are playing school, playing football at other schools, who are watching like well off videos every night because yeah. it's just like they love it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's crazy. It's still crazy. It works. All right, and then I think last one. Yep, from Chad. Oh, here we go. Okay, you think Bronny's coming to Colorado? He's on the USA team with the head coach of Colorado coaching the team. Yes, Tad Boyle is coaching that team. Uh, Tate Frazier, if you guys didn't catch it, put out a tweet last night saying, Bronny James is down to USC in Colorado. I'm not going to rain on the parade too much. I'll just say that I think that's a little bit of wishful thinking. With that being said, I once thought that Coach Prime coming to Colorado was wishful thinking. So uh, anything, I, I never say never to anything anymore. I hope it happens. Uh, I, the thought of like Bronny James and Shador Sanders being on campus at the same time is, uh, is an exciting one. Do you ever do stuff with basketball anymore? A little bit. Um, they have, so right after I started, actually, uh, we hired a girl named Serena that runs kind of mm -hmm. the basketball media. Okay. Um, she's freaking awesome too. She's the next, she's the next Snells. She's oh, a young Snells. There we go. She would hate to hear that. But she <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, no, she's she's really good and does uh, all their video content. And then uh, Tyler Davis does all their photo and graphic content. And then Lexi does all their social content. Yep. So I help shoot games here and there. And um, I got to work with Serena on the intro video this year, which was fun. Nice. But yeah, I do you know other sports here and there uh, to help out. It's going to be cool. Obviously, we know we've talked about football all the time, but with uh, with Cody Williams coming next year, like might be the best year of uh, CU athletics in a long time. Let's go. I'm ready. Yeah, all right. One more from the homie Neely. He says the rise. Neely has not seen it. What is the rise? Neely, you come into my office next week <laughs> and I'll show you the rise. The rise is sick. Uh, and honestly, like the Lawrence Vickers video is probably my favorite. Yeah, I still talk to him, too. Dude. He's wanting to do some podcast stuff. I need to get back to him. I also once saw... Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, if we got to get him here. You need to get him here. Yes, absolutely. I also have once seen, like, a behind-the-scenes uncut 
never before seen video oh, yeah. that we, we did can't not put that one in the public. Did not get released. And that one was probably also my favorite. Let's just say Lawrence Vickers told the story of that CSU play in a very real way, unedited. Yeah, uh, in a way that can't come out from the university. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll have to have you back again sometime. Yeah. And we are absolutely looking forward to all of the awesome content that's going to be coming out from you guys thanks for having me i'm gonna uh, give a shout out to the hype squad that's our creative crew let's go yeah let's go uh as jake would say let's go buffs let's go buffs <laughs>